Hey gamers, what's going on? Welcome back to Marco Argues on the internet, I guess. I saw this latest Veritasium video uh, about the Sleeping Beauty problem and I wanted to weigh in on it. So let's just get right into it. Do not hit the like button or the dislike button, at least not yet. I want you to consider a problem that's been one of the most controversial in math and philosophy over the past 20 years. There is no consensus answer, so I want you to listen to the problem and then vote for the answer you prefer using the like and dislike buttons. Okay, let me already stop here. Consensus is completely irrelevant here. If you tell me that 1 plus 1 equals 3, then you are wrong. And if 1 billion people tell me that 1 plus 1 equals 3, then that just means that 1 billion people are wrong. So. Yeah, consensus doesn't really factor into this. Okay, here is the setup. Sleeping Beauty volunteers to be the subject of an experiment. And before it starts, she's informed of the procedure. On Sunday night, she will be put to sleep. And then, a fair coin will be flipped. If that coin comes up heads, she'll be awakened on Monday and then put back to sleep. If the coin comes up tails, she will also be awakened on Monday and put back to sleep, but then she will be awakened on Tuesday as well and then put back to sleep. Now, each time she gets put back to sleep, she will forget that she was ever awakened. In the brief period, anytime she's awake, she will be told no information, but she'll be asked one question. What do you believe is the probability that the coin came up heads? So how should she answer? Feel free to pause the video and answer the question for yourself right now. If you did not follow that, then feel free to rewind the video and watch it again. Coincidentally, if you're looking for the answer, then you can also rewind the video and watch it again. Let me do that for you real quick. A fair coin will be flipped. Did you catch that? Let me do it again. A fair coin will be flipped. A fair coin will be flipped. A fair coin will be flipped. So what is the problem here? The answer is literally in the question. This is the opposite of a problem. This is an anti-problem. <laughs> this is like a problem going to the doctor for a sex change. Anyway, uh, I guess let's just keep going. I mean, the intuitive answer that pops in my head is clearly one in three. It could be the Monday when it came up heads, or it could be the Monday when it came up tails, or it could be the Tuesday when it came up tails. But you know what's really interesting is you just answered that the probability of a coin coming up heads is one third. I think a lot of this comes down to what specific question is asked of her. What is the probability that a fair coin flipped gives heads? That's 50%. Mm -hmm. What is the probability that the coin came up heads? I would say the answer is a third from her perspective. <laughs> it's, it's remarkably the same question. So Derek argues here that there are three states which should all be equally likely. But that is not true because two of these states depend on each other. One cannot exist without the other. So these are really only one true state in terms of the initial probability. To make that more clear, let's just assign names to these states. So we have heads. Uh, you get waken up once, let's call that H1. And you got tails, where you get waken up twice. So let's call that T1 and T2. So now realize that T1 and T2 always exist together. T2 cannot exist without T1 existing prior to it. And vice versa, T1 cannot exist without T2 uh, existing subsequently. So there are not three separate events, there are only two. But okay, let's keep going. The simple reason why Sleeping Beauty should say the probability of heads is one half is because she knows the coin is fair. Nothing changes between when the coin is flipped and when she wakes up, and she knew for a fact that she would be woken up and she receives no new information when that happens. Imagine that instead of flipping the coin after she's asleep, the experimenters flip the coin first and ask her immediately, what's the probability that the coin came up heads? Well, she would certainly say one half. So why should anything change after she goes to sleep and wakes up? This is known as the halfer position. But there is another way to look at it. 
Others would argue that something does change when she's awakened. I mean, it, it seems like she gets no new information. There are no calendars, no one tells her anything, and she knew that she would be woken up. But she actually learns something important. She learns that she's gone from existing in a reality where there are two possible states, the coin came up either heads or tails, to existing in a reality where there are three possible states, Monday heads, Monday tails, or Tuesday tails. And therefore, she should assign equal probability to each of these three outcomes where heads only occurred in one. This is exactly what I was saying. There are not three states, there are only two states. But tails is uh, split up into two substates. But these two substates are not equivalent to the one uh, head state or the overall tail state. So the probability that the coin came up heads is one third. No, it's not. Let's just change the question slightly. Let's ask, what is the probability of you currently being in the process of being waken up two times? It's clearly a half, isn't it? Because being waken up the second time is dependent on waking up the first time. They're not independent, so they share the same probability. This is known as the thirder position. Now, I know it seems wrong to suggest that a fair coin should have a one-third probability of coming up heads, but that's because the question she's asked is subtly different. The implied question is, Given you're awake, what's the probability that the coin came up heads? And that is one third. Now, halfers would counter that just because there are three possible outcomes doesn't mean they are each equally likely. In the Monty Hall problem, for example, the contestant ultimately has to choose between two doors. But it'd be wrong to assign them 50-50 odds. The prize is actually twice as likely to be behind one door than the other. In the Sleeping Beauty problem, we know a heads outcome and a tails outcome are equally likely. So the chance of waking up on Monday with heads is 50%, and the chance of waking up on Monday or Tuesday with tails should be 50%. Therefore, the tails probability gets split across two days, 25% each. So I guess this best shows the problem with the uh, third view. There is no splitting of probabilities because T1 and T2 have to share the same probability. One cannot exist without the other. So there is no splitting of probabilities here. But if you repeat the experiment over and over, which you can try for yourself by repeatedly flipping a coin, you find she wakes up a third of the time Monday heads, a third of the time Monday tails, and a third of the time Tuesday tails, not 50, 25, 25, like the previous analysis would suggest. Well, yes, of course, because she wakes up more often in the tails case, and you are only counting the times she wakes up, but that does not affect the probability in any way. The probability you're looking for is literally in the coin you are flipping, which is 50-50. So if you were Sleeping Beauty and you were awakened and asked, what's the probability the coin came up heads? What would you say? If you would say one third, then hit the like button. If you would say one half, hit the dislike button. The answer may seem obvious to you, but you should know that to other people, the other answer seems equally obvious. And that's why hundreds and hundreds of philosophy papers have been published on this problem over the past 22 years. There have been many variations of this problem. Like, what if instead of being woken up twice if the coin lands tails, she's instead woken up a million times? If the coin comes up heads, she's still woken only once. Doesn't it seem absurd in this case, when Sleeping Beauty wakes up, to say that it was just as likely that the coin landed heads as tails, when we know there are a million more wake-ups in the tails case than in the heads case? Again, he is assuming that these million wake-up calls are separate events when they are not. Let's rephrase the question again. What is the likelihood of you currently being in the process of being waken up a million times? It is clearly 50%, no? T1 million depends on T1 million minus one, which depends on T1 million minus two, and so on, which all depend on the first T1 wake-up call. So they're not separate. T1 to T1 million are the same event. I mean, if you reach into a bag of one white marble and a million black marbles, what are the chances that you pull out that one white marble? 
this analogy does not work because again he is assuming that the black marbles are independent from one another when they are not the options are not pulling out one white marble versus pulling out one black marble it is pulling out the one white marble or all the black marbles you cannot pick up a single black marble because when you pick up the first black marble then the rest just falls out with it and in fact you cannot pick up the 500 black marble you only have the option of picking the first white marble or the first black marble and after you pick up the first black marble there will be uh, however many other black marbles following it you have no choice once you picked up the first black marble there suddenly will be many many more black marbles but the initial choice is picking one black versus picking one white you cannot pick black marble 500 it just doesn't work i was pretty convinced by this and i considered myself a thirder but this same argument is used to convince people that we're living in a simulation the thinking goes that our computing technology has improved so dramatically, even over just the last 40 years, that we can imagine a time in the not too distant future when we can create a completely realistic simulation of our world. And once that occurs, it should be trivial to make unlimited copies of that simulation. And then if you were to ask someone if they're living in a simulation, they would have to admit that they probably are because there are many more instances of that existence than the one true external reality. But how do we know that this hasn't happened already and that we're living inside a simulation? I mean, if it can happen, then it probably has happened and we are living in a simulation. This seems like the logical conclusion of the thirder worldview. Now, I personally don't buy that I'm living in a simulation and I think most people don't buy it, but maybe that's just illogical bias. But there's another thought experiment that makes me seriously reconsider the thirder position. Let's say there's a soccer game between a really great team like Brazil and a less world-dominating team like Canada. So the odds are 80-20 in Brazil's favor. Now a researcher is going to put you to sleep before the game starts. And if Brazil wins, they'll wake you up one time. But if Canada wins, they'll wake you up 30 times in a row. And just like Sleeping Beauty, you won't remember if you've been woken before. Okay, so the game is about to start. You fall asleep. And now you're woken up. Who do you think won the game? The thirder would say Canada, but I would almost certainly say Brazil. I mean, why should I give any weight to what the researcher would have done if Canada had won when I'm fairly confident that they won't? To extend this, let's say Brazil plays Canada five times and we do this experiment each time. Well, then if you say Brazil each time you're woken up, you'll probably be right about four out of five of the games. But if you said Canada every time, you would be wrong about those four games, but right 30 times in a row when you're repeatedly asked about Canada's one victory. If you stand to win a bet by correctly answering the question, then by all means, you should bet on Canada. But if you want to correctly pick the winner of more of the games, well then you should say Brazil. And this is what's at the heart of the dispute between halfers and thirders in the Sleeping Beauty problem. If you want to be right about the outcome of the coin tosses, well, you should say the probability of heads is a half. But if you want to answer more questionings correctly, well, then you should say one third. So here he is changing the question. The problem is now not the probability, but the problem is answering the most questions correctly. So you have to guess the result of the coin flip correctly as many times as possible. So of course, if you're waking up in the head state, you're only waking up once. So you have one chance to answer that question and you can at maximum get one answer right. So that is just the losing scenario. On the other hand, in the tailed state, you get asked the question 30 times. So you have 30 possibilities to answer the question correctly. So if you're trying to maximize the amount of right answers given, of course you have to say tails. But that doesn't change the fact that heads and tails are equally likely. It just so happens that in the tails case, you have many, many more uh, options to answer correctly. So your options are either give a correct answer 30 times or one time. 
So of course you have to hope that you are in the state where you can give the correct answer 30 times because that just maximizes your winning potential. But that doesn't change the fact that you could just as likely be in the losing state. I want to leave you with one last thought experiment. Imagine that you know for a fact that before our universe began, there was a coin flip. And if it came up heads, only a single universe would be created. But if it came up tails, a quasi-infinite multiverse would be created. And in each of those multiverse universes, you'd find every possible variation of Earth and the people on it. In some versions, there would be no Earth. Now, you becoming conscious is just like Sleeping Beauty waking up. There's no way to tell if you're in that single universe or in one of the multiverse universes, but you know there are a lot more of them. So would you think that you're for sure in the multiverse? Or are the chances 50-50? So this is a completely different scenario again. So let's go ahead and unwrap it. So the real question is, what is the likelihood of you existing in a multiverse, which is different from what are the odds of a multiverse existing versus one universe existing. Of course, your chances of existing are much more likely in a multiverse. So does your existence retroactively change the probabilities of the initial coin? No, of course it doesn't, because there are two independent probabilities. To make that more clear, let's change the setup a little. Let's say when the result is heads, then a universe is created where no life is possible. And when Tails comes up, then the universe is created that we are currently residing in. And now I ask you the question, what is the likelihood that Tails came up? Well, of course, it is 100% because we exist in this universe. So Tails must have come up for me to ask this question in the first place. But that doesn't change the fact that the initial coin toss was a 50-50 chance. It just means that we necessarily now exist in a universe where tails came up initially. And I think that's kind of the crux of the problem, that you are asking for a past probability, which doesn't really make sense because the thing in question already happened. With probability, you are trying to predict the future, like what are the chances of A happening opposed to B happening. But when you are in that future, then you already know which one of both happened. So that might be a philosophical question. If you're thinking, okay, we're living in a deterministic universe, then B was always bound to happen. So it was always 100%. It only seemed like 50-50 when we are in the past because we had no knowledge of the future. But know that we are living in that future, we know that this past probability was actually 0% for A, 100% for B, because that is what happened and that was always meant to happen. But that's a completely different question. So asking you the question, what is the probability of this universe supporting life is pointless? Because of course it does, because we have to exist for me to ask this question in the first place. That doesn't change the fact that the initial coin toss was a 50-50 chance. It was, was just as likely that we don't exist as it is likely that we exist. It just so happened that tails came up. So yeah, that's all I have to say about that. See ya.